chapter 7. Now, with this passage of scripture, this chapter, David wants to build a house for the Lord. David wants to build a temple. But the Lord says, no, you cannot build me a house. He says, no, you're going to have a son who is going to be a peaceful man, and he will build my house. So this is the, this is the story. This is the situation of how um, Nathan then comes into David and tells him he cannot build the house. Now, I want you to think about this. I was thinking about it and praying about it with this message here. We all have things that we're praying about. We all have things we're praying for. How do we respond when the Lord says, no? Was it a sin for David to want to build a house for the Lord? No. Was David doing something that was wrong to where that uh, God would say, I cannot believe this. It's written right in the law. No, no. Now, God did say, I mean, there's no need. <laughs> I've got a tent. And God knew one day he was going to live in our hearts. But David wanted to build this house. And so the Lord said, all right, but it's going to be your son. And so David then um, prepared with all of his might, preparing, setting things aside so that as soon as he passed away and Solomon became the king, Solomon could then build a house for the Lord. This is one of the reasons why David was called a man after God's own heart. Did David have sins? Yes, David had sins. Did he make mistakes? Oh, yes. Did he make some bad decisions? Oh, yes, he did. He was a human. Amen. The same for you and I. Yes, we're going to have sins. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to uh, make bad decisions. But yet our heart ought to be in tune with God. And so when David was told no, what did he do? He began preparing we're going to read right here before the preparing of David's prayer. Of David's prayer and what David said. Now, I've been doing a series of messages. Again, I told you how I do these series of messages, kind of each month, just kind of jump in and then do another part of that message. And then later I'll jump in and do another part of this message. But we've been looking at magnifying the Lord. We don't want to magnify ourselves, but we want to magnify the Lord. And our message today is this, of magnifying the Lord the name of the Lord. Magnify the name of the Lord. I know that sounds basic and it sounds simple, but it's something for us to be reminded of that we need to lift up, we need to exalt the name of the Lord. What did David do after he was told, no, uh, you've killed people? I mean, I'm sure David with every one of them had a justification. But David, uh, he could have, David would say, but God, you're going to hold it against me that I killed Goliath? God, he was blaspheming you. I had to go out there and God, you helped me. You delivered me. I mean, I'm sure on, David could have argued with God about it and said, but God, I had to kill the Philistines. But God, I had to fight against this and I had to fight against that. Um, now, I know David as well could be reminded of some people he killed that he didn't have to kill, like Uriah. I'm sure David could look back on it. Okay, maybe that's what God is, God is speaking about. But David, when he was told no, he magnified the name of the Lord. Now, I want to read this one verse, and then we'll go back and we'll look at all this chapter. But I want you to see this first. Look at verse 26. 2 Samuel 7, verse 26. And let thy name be magnified forever, saying, the Lord of hosts is the God over Israel and let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. David said, let thy name be magnified forever. David wasn't concerned about establishing and magnifying his own name. And we're going to see that as we look at this passage in scripture. If David's name was going to get magnified, it was going to be God that was going to, uh, a God who was going to magnify his name. It wasn't going to be David. Magnified. David said, let the name of the Lord be magnified. Now, we're not going to take time to look at this, but this story 
And this passage of scripture and the same thing about magnifying the name of the Lord is also found in 1 Chronicles chapter 17. Later, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read it now, but you can go home and look it up and read 1 Chronicles 17 and verse 24 is where David says about, again, about the Lord's name being magnified. I want us to go back now to verse number 18. 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 18. And let's look at this prayer that David prayed after he had been told no. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord. And he said, who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto? Again, <laughs> David didn't go in and argue with God. David didn't say, well, okay, whatever, I'm still going to do it. No, he obeyed. When the Lord said, no, you're not going to build the house, David stopped right then and there. And he said, okay, well, I'm going to prepare. But notice he goes in before the Lord, and I want you to see his humility as he right off says, who am I? David was not going to exalt himself and lift up his name. He was going to lift up the name of the Lord. Verse 19. And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God. But thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the manner of men, O Lord God? You see, the God, David said this was just a small thing for God to bring him and make him the king. Now, if God did that for us, we'd say, wow, what a big thing. But David recognized and said, oh, this is just a small thing. Um, I remember Saul was to be the king. Uh, Saul was the king. And who was then supposed to be the king? Jonathan. Well, who was David's best friend? Jonathan. But God said, no, Jonathan's not going to be the king. Rather, it's going to be David. Now, what did God just promise to David? He said, David, your son is going to build me a house. So you know what David knew that meant? After David died, there was not going to be somebody else come in and kill off all of his children and become the king. David understood that and knew then that that meant God was going to establish his son as the king in his stead. David was already no doubt seeing his family and seeing it splintering and falling apart and one killing another. And David's wondering what is going to happen. And God tells him, your son Solomon, whose name is Peace, he is going to be the one who is going to build the house. David then recognized God's plan for his life. You see, when God tells us no, we've got to see God's plan in our life. There are things we maybe want to do, but God says, no, I'm not going to have you do them, but I'm going to have your children to do them. But God says, no, I'm not going to have you do that, but I'm going to have somebody else to do that. We may desire, oh, I would love to be a missionary to such and such place. And God says, no. God says, I have this that I want you to do. And you say, but God, I really want this or that. And God says, no, I, I don't have that for you. But you can be involved in missions and you can help and someone else can go to such and such place and they can preach the gospel there to those people. Say, God, I want to uh, be able to do this and that. God says, no, but you can invest in the life of young people. Again, I thank you all so much for how you've invested in the lives of my children. And now my children in Bible college, and hopefully one day they're serving the Lord. You all have a part of that. You had a part of that in encouraging them and them here at church. And, and they're serving the Lord one day. And, and, and God has told us, no, you're not able to. God says, I'm going to bless through others that you reach and you influence and you help. Think about people in your life you've helped. And now they're off serving the Lord and doing whatever it, uh, uh, that God wants for them to do. That's where David is right now. David wanted to do this, but he realized I can't do this. But thank God he has promised my son is then going to be the king. Now I want you to notice verse 20. I want, I want you to get this, all right? As I was reading through this passage, this just jumped out at me. Notice this. And what can David say more unto thee for thou Lord God knowest thy servant now don't say it out loud but I'm just curious if you caught from this verse what I caught from this verse here's what I caught from this verse David is speaking in the third person <laughs> he says and what can David what the, the way we normally speak what would we say what could I say 
That's the way we normally speak. But he's speaking, they call it from the third person of where like you have moved yourself over here and then you're looking at yourself and you're saying, what can David say? That's what David has done right here. He says, and what can David say more unto thee? He's speaking in the th from the third person point of view. Now, here's something else to know about this. Usually, when a person speaks from the third person perspective, it's because they are a narcissist. Usually when a person is speaking from that point of view, they're speaking something good about themselves and they'll look to themselves and they'll then refer to themselves as though that's not who they are. You'll hear politicians do that. Now, I say, I want to emphasize this though. I don't believe that's the perspective David is coming from. I don't think David's looking at this and he's referring to himself as, as David and he's doing that as, as from a narcissistic point of view. I think the reason why David is doing this is because he's showing his name is not what's to be magnified. It's the name of the Lord that's to be magnified. And so David mentions his name in a negative light. And what can David say more unto thee? Here's David the king. What more can David say unto the Lord? There, in other words, I can't argue with you. I can't try to convince you on this. You know what is best. And so whatever you have determined is best, I'm willing to go along with that. And so David mentions his name, but he mentions it as in this context, of, but we're going to magnify the name of the Lord. We're going to lift up and magnify, because he already says there, uh, who am I? He said in verse number 18, but I just, I, I, was, I was reading through that and it just caught my eye and he does it again later. We'll see this again of where he refers to himself again, the third person. Uh, uh, we'll see this again later. But he says, and what can David say more unto thee? For thou, Lord God, knowest thy servant. Again, see how David says he's a servant. David's the king. But yet David says, I am your servant. Side little note, time out. A little side note. You want to know part of the problem we have in our country today is we have elected representatives who no longer view themselves as a servant of the people. That's right. If they would change their perspective and realize they're to serve the people, it would change our country. But they are looking out for themselves and what's best for themselves or what's best for some deep pocketed person who has given them all kinds of campaign contributions and they're serving them instead of serving the people. David recognized and looked at himself, even though he's the king, he was a servant and he recognized who had put him in power. It was the Lord. And so he was the Lord's servant. Let me continue reading now. Verse number 21. He says, for thy word's sake and according to thine own heart, hast thou done all these things to make thy servant know them. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God. For there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself and to make him a name. Did you get that? To make him a name. See, what we're magnifying is the name of the Lord. And so David said, you brought Israel, uh, you, you created Israel, you gave Abraham a son uh, named Isaac and gave him then a son of, of Jacob and changed his name to Israel and then gave him 12 sons and then uh, brought him out of Egypt and you've done all that to give you a great name. Notice he goes on in verse 23. And to do for you great things and terrible for thy land. Before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, from the nations and their gods. Do you get this? The purpose of Israel was to give God a great name and for them to do great things for God. You see that right there in the middle of the verse. To make him a great name, uh, to make him a name, and to do for you great things. That was what Israel was supposed to do, was to do for God great things. Guess what you and I are supposed to do? We're given the name of the Lord. We carry the name Christian. Everywhere we go, we serve the Lord. And what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to do great things for him. We're supposed to serve him. Oh, I love this. Let me continue reading. Verse 24. For thou hast confirmed to thyself, thy people Israel, to be a people 
unto thee forever, and thou, Lord, art become their God. Notice in the middle of verse 24 there, it says, a people unto thee forever. Remember, Israel is still the Jewish people. They are still God's people. They're still God's people. That's never changed. They're still a covenant. They're still God's people. Now, God has expanded. God has opened up his family to include us Gentiles through the person of Jesus. When we trust Jesus as Savior, we can then become a people of God. God has then welcomed us into his family. God cannot use his people, the Jewish people today. He cannot use them because they have forsaken him. Because they have become consumed with the teachings of their rabbis and their scribes and consumed with other books that are not the Torah. They're consumed with the Talmud and other books like that. And they're consumed with these teachings and they're not consumed with and following and concerned about the word of God and following the uh, of what God has led. And they have rejected God's son, Jesus. And so you know who God is using and blessing today? The church. God is using and blessing the church. Why? Because we have accepted his son, Jesus, and we are teaching and preaching the word of God. That's why it's a dangerous thing for a church to quit following the word of God and to quit teaching the word of God. There's a lot of churches that just use the Bible. They just use it. They'll stand up and they'll read a verse from the Bible, but they're not really teaching the Bible and following the Bible. It's important for us to do that because otherwise then God will not use us. God will not bless us. But Israel, they're still God's people. Verse 25 now. 2 Samuel 7, 25. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as thou hast said. And let thy name, that's our text verse, and let thy name be magnified forever, saying the Lord of hosts, is the God over Israel. And let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. For thou, O Lord God of, uh, for thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, hast revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee an house. Therefore hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. And now, O Lord God, thou art that God, and thy words be true, and thou hast uh, uh, promised this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore now, if it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee, for thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it, and thy blessing, let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. The name of the Lord, magnify the name of the Lord. Names in the Bible are important and have meaning. Names are important and have meaning. Um, today, sad to say, we're losing that in our, our, our modern culture of using Bible names that have meaning or using names just even in general that have, um, that have meaning. But understand that, that in the Bible, names are important and they have meaning. In Genesis 5, 2, the Bible says, male and female created ye them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the name when they were in the day uh, in the day when they were created God called them Adam and Eve Adam that's why it's common today when a woman gets married that she then takes the husband's name the husband's family name God called them Adam they were called after the after the name of Adam and so that's why that kind of tradition that custom um, has, has has come um, because he called their name Adam Genesis chapter two, verse 19, the Bible says, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So God calls Adam and Eve, Adam. And then God says, all right, now Adam, I want you to name everything. And so Adam's going around the garden, he's seen him and he's given every single thing their name. In Genesis 3.20, the Bible says, and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. So Adam gave her the name of Eve. The Bible tells in Proverbs 22 and verse one, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Ecclesiastes 7.1 says a good name is better than 
precious ointment in the day of death and the day of one's birth. I mentioned to you about my sons being there at the Bible college and the college is packed. The dorms are packed. And I told you how that there's eight guys and as far as in their dorm, there are eight guys in one room, four bunk beds. Now let me tell you what's gonna happen. It's gonna stink. <laughs> I'll just tell you that right now. It's going to stink when you have eight guys and they take off their shoes at night. When you have eight guys and they take off their socks and they put them in their dirty clothes hamper. You have eight guys and not only that, but there's going to be a mixture of smells of deodorants and colognes and body spray. There's going to be a mixture of soaps, shampoos. You can just imagine the smells. And then they're going to they have a microwave in there where they can microwave some food. And you can just imagine some of the smells that will be coming out of that microwave wave as well. And I just tell you, it is going to smell. The Bible says a good name is better than precious ointment. Whenever you begin stinking and we, we thank the Lord and we have deodorant and we have uh, cologne, we, you ladies, you have um, perfume or if you're really fancy, toilet water. I don't know why they call it that anymore, but they do. I've seen that on there. They call it the toilet. But anyway, um, I, I like to prefer the, the term perfume. But anyway, we have that. Do you know a good name is better than those pretty smells? It's better than a candle. I mean, can you imagine the best candle you could ever get would be a candle that would smell like Dr. Pepper? I mean, can you just imagine that walking into your house? And, oh, wonderful. They may make a candle, hopefully they do, make a candle that smells like bacon. Oh, there's just nothing better than you walk into the house and just... You can smell that bacon. That, that would be a good candle. A good name is better than the precious ointment. Listen, about all these names that are here on the earth, no matter what name that somebody may have, that people say, oh, that's a good name, and that's a good name, and oh, I like that name. And there's different names that are very popular. And oh, this will be the most popular name this year, and that will be the most popular name this year, and, and continuing on and on. God's name is above all other names. Exodus 20 and verse 7, God said about his own name, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. This is why when you, we name our children, we don't call them after the name of God. It's because God said, don't do that. He said, I have a name that's above every name, but I don't want you calling your kids after my name. He said, I don't want you using my name in vain. I don't want you using it as a cuss word. I don't want you to use it uh, uh, just lightly. He says in Leviticus 19, 12, and ye shall not swear by my name falsely. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy, thy God. I am the Lord. And he said, don't you swear to, oh, by the name of God, I promise I'm going to do don't you do that. Don't swear by my name. God said, my name is above all other names. In Psalm 72, 17, his name shall endure forever and his name shall be continued as long as the sun and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Isaiah 24, 15 says, wherefore glorify you the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. Revelation 15, 4, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. If you would, turn with me to Acts chapter 19. I want you to turn with me over to Acts chapter 19. Um, God, while you're turning there, let me mention this to you. God has glorified the name of Jesus. God gave Jesus the name Jesus. How did they come up with the name Jesus? Did Joseph just come up with it? Joseph just say, you know, that's the name I want to call this son. Mary, come up and no. God gave him the name Jesus and God has glorified the name of Jesus. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Philippians 2 and verse 9 through 11, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of 
God the Father. God's name is above every name. And then God has given his son Jesus a name. And God has glorified his name above all names. Look at Acts chapter 19 and verse number 13. Acts 19, 13. The Bible says, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. <laughs> they tried to use the name of Jesus, but they weren't saved. And they used the name of Jesus, and they didn't have the power behind the name. Oh, and that didn't work because the Bible says in verse 14 and continuing, and there were seven sons, one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, priests which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? Verse 16, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. So they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all at the name of and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was magnified. That's what we're talking about, magnifying the name of the Lord. What name do we magnify today? We magnify the name of Jesus. Magnify the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is what was magnified. And many believed, came and confessed and showed their deeds. The name of Jesus. How do we magnify Jesus? God's name. How we magnify God's name. Now remember, we've mentioned this with magnifying. When you take a magnifying glass, you look at something small and you're making it larger. Okay? That's not the idea when we're magnifying God's name because his name is already great. His name is already great. What we're doing is we're making it greater in our life. We're making it greater in others. It's, it's actually the, uh, the result of like a telescope. There's something that is great and that is big out there but we can't see it and you use that telescope and then it brings it into our focus the name of the lord is there but the people of the world because of the blindness that is in them through their sin and the how devil has blinded their minds they can't see the lord and we have to make it great so they can see the name of the Lord. He needs to be magnified in our own life as well to where that uh, we uh, see him working in our life. So how do we magnify God's name? First off, pray to him. Why do I say that? Because we pray in the name of, of Jesus. When you pray in the name of Jesus, you're magnifying the name of Jesus. We don't pray, you ready for this? We don't pray in the name of Mary because we're not magnifying the name of Mary. The Bible doesn't tell us to magnify the name of Mary. We're to magnify the name of Jesus. That's the person who we're to pray to all through the Bible. We don't magnify the name of Paul and pray to Paul. We don't magnify the name of Joseph and pray to Joseph. We don't magnify the name of David even. And we read about it, pray to David. I don't magnify the name of my dad. My dad is now there in heaven. I don't pray to my dad. We don't pray to any relatives that have already died and gone to heaven. We don't magnify their name. We magnify the name of Jesus and we do so by praying to him. Turn back to John. I want you to see this in John chapter 14. Jesus taught us to pray. And I want you to know that Jesus, when he taught us to pray, he taught us to pray in his name. We pray to the Father through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. That's how the Trinity is used in prayer. We read that verse in Sunday school this morning of how the, the Holy Spirit, he, he knows our infirmities and he is making groanings for us with, uh, which cannot be uttered. He's making intercession for us. We're, we pray to the Father through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. John chapter 14 and verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Look at chapter 15. John 15 and verse 16. John 15, 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father, in my name, 
he may give it you. Look at chapter 16 and verse 23. John chapter 16 and verse number 23. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. We are to pray in the name of Jesus. As we pray in the name of Jesus, we are magnifying the name of Jesus. People need to hear us pray. They need to know that we pray. We need to tell people that we pray. Someone has a problem, we say, I'm going to pray for you about that. We need to let it be known that we are praying for people. Send it all the time in text messages to people. I'm praying for you. If you uh, sign a birthday card or an anniversary card or whatever, and you're sending a card, be sure to include in there that you're praying for them and that you're praying in the name of Jesus because as we pray in the name of Jesus we're magnifying the name of Jesus number two how do we magnify his name number one we pray to him number two we sing praises to him that's how we magnify the name of the Lord is by singing praises unto him I love all during the week of singing praises to the Lord I'm glad we don't have to just wait until we're at church to sing. I'm so thankful for the technology that we have nowadays of where there's apps that will play good Christian music. You can even download music to your phone and you can listen to that. We have CDs. Some people might even call them tapes. <laughs> but you can listen. Some of you may even still have vinyl records or whatever that you might have you can plug it in you can listen to good Christian. you don't have to just wait until you're at church you can sing praises oh we even have song books now please don't take any of our song books from our church but you can order some online you can buy some you go to a Christian bookstore and they'll have song books for sale and you can have a song book you can go to you can go to thrift books, thrift stores. It's amazing how many song books you can find for sale at thrift stores. We just got rid of them. So next time you're there at a thrift store and you're walking through a, uh, and you see the books, go over there. I bet you'll find a song book. I bet you'll find a song book there. You can get it for, I don't know, a quarter or a dollar or whatever they sell some of the different books for there. You can get a song book. You can take it home. You can sing praise unto the Lord. And the great thing when you're singing praise unto the Lord, it's just you and the dog. Amen. He might start howling, but he's joining in with you. <laughs> we may not sing the best, but we can sing praise the Lord. I love as I'm driving down the road and I'm listening to music to begin singing unto the Lord. It works a whole lot better, too, when I'm out on the highway and doing 75 and so there's nobody that hears me. But I like to do it even in town. I wonder sometimes people look over and go, what is coming out of that car? But I love to sing unto the Lord. I hope you do as well. That's magnifying the name of the Lord. Somebody were to come and visit our church and why do they, why do they even sing? Well, they don't even sing very good. And boy, those songs, that, that's, that's not near as exciting as the songs that I heard here at, from the world. It's not near as good. Hey, listen, the reason why we're seeing is because we love the Lord and we're magnifying the name of the Lord and we're able to do so in, in song. Psalm 7 and verse 17, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord most high. Psalm 9 and verse 2, I'll be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name. O thou most high. Psalm 18, 49. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Psalm 61 and verse 8. So will I sing praise to thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vow. Psalm 66 and verse 2. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Verse 4. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing praise unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Selah. Psalm 68 and verse 4. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Exalt him that rideth upon the heavens by his name Jah and rejoice before him. Psalm 92 and verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Psalm 96 and verse 2. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth the salvation from day to day. Psalm 135 and verse 3. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing praises unto his name.
For it is pleasant. Psalm 149 verse 3. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the temple and heart. Romans 15 and verse 9, and that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, for this cause will I confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. Singing unto the name of the Lord. It's how we magnify the name of the Lord. One of the problems with the contemporary Christian music, that's the new music being written today, so much of it is about the singer and it's not about the Savior. Next time you're listening to some of this contemporary Christian music, just stop and listen and think about who are they singing about? And you'll hear a lot of their songs is about them and how they are going to live and how they're going to handle. And the name of the Lord might be mentioned in the song, but the song is about the singer. Our songs are to be about the Savior glorifying him. We're to magnify his name. Pray, sing. Number three, tell others about him. And boy, this is really basic. Yes, it is. I told you that magnifying the name of the Lord, it sounds like it's something really simple and basic, and it is. But we need to do it, and we need to be reminded, and that's the point of this message today, is to remind us to lift up the name of the Lord. We're in a political season right now and we're um, um, less than 90 days away from the election. I forget what it is, maybe like 85 days or something like that from the election and people will go around and praise the name of their candidate. You can buy a shirt with the name of your candidate on it. You can have a sign out in the, 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 at the in front of your house there telling people, vote for this candidate. And so I'm just saying names get lifted and exalted and talked about the name that we ought to lift and exalt more than any other is the name of the Lord. That's the name who ought to be delivered. Who's going to deliver America? The Lord. Who's going to bless our country and help our country? The Lord. If our answer is who's going to protect our country? This president. No, it's the Lord. Now, God can use these people, but we have to lift up the name of the Lord. Thirdly, tell others about him. Tell others about him. Psalm 22, 22. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Psalm 45, 17. I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall this people praise thee forever and ever. Psalm 102, 21. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. John 20, 31. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life. Are you ready? Through his name. Our salvation is through the name of Jesus. Salvation is not through the name of the church. You can't get to heaven by saying, I'm a Baptist. That won't get you into heaven. It's not the name of the church that's going to get you into heaven. It's not the name of a preacher. You can't say, oh, Pastor Philip saved me. I can't save you. It's not through the name of a preacher. It's not through the name of a church. It's not through the name of a relative. I'm going to heaven because my grandma was such a, a, a strong Christian or I'm going to heaven because my dad was, no, no, no. It's the name of Jesus. It's through his name we are saved. We're not getting to heaven through an angel. There's no angel that can deliver us and take us to heaven. It's Jesus. We're delivered through his name. Acts 3.16, in his name, through faith, in his name, hath made this man strong whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Acts 4 and verse 7 says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Verse 10, it says, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. And then verse 30, the Bible says, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Acts 10, 43, the Bible says to him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission 
of sins. Romans 9, verse 17, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this cause, uh, for this same purpose, sorry, even for the same purpose, have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Hebrews 2, 12 saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. We are to tell others of the name of Jesus as we pray in the name of Jesus, we're magnifying his name. You have a family member that's away from the Lord, here's what you do, you pray with them and you pray in the name of Jesus. You're lifting up the name of the Lord. They need to hear that. They need to hear that. As we sing praises to the Lord, we're lifting up the name of the Lord. As we talk about the Lord and declaring him to the brethren, we're magnifying, we're lifting up the name of the Lord. Turn over to Romans chapter 2 and verse 24. I want to end with a warning. I want to end with a warning. They'll tell you in speech class, when you're giving a speech, positive, negative, positive. They'll tell you, end with positive. The power of positive speaking. The power of positive thinking. I want to end today, though, with a, a warning to us. We're to magnify the name of the Lord. But if we're not careful, we can actually cause others to blaspheme the name of the Lord. And instead of magnifying the name It'll cause to where people don't even want to hear the name of the Lord. Look at Romans chapter 2 and verse 24. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Now, he's speaking to the Jews. He specifically is, is um, pointing that out. Verse 17, he says, Behold, thou art called a Jew and resteth in the law and makest thy boast of God. The reason why he's saying this, he's trying to get the Jewish people to understand they need Jesus as their Savior. It's not just enough that you're a Jew and you follow the Torah and you tithe and you keep the Sabbath and you don't eat uh, 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 food that's unclean. You eat kosher food. That's not enough. He says that through you, the name of God is you and I need to be careful because instead of magnifying the Lord, we can actually cause to where people don't even want to hear the name of the Lord. Look at 1 Timothy 6. Here he tells us the same thing. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 1. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 1. Now he's not speci speaking specifically to Jews, but the same idea of that people won't even want to hear the name of the Lord. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 1. He says, let as many servants... As they're under the yoke, count their own masters worthy of all honor. Here's why. That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. 1 Timothy 6, 1. We have to be careful because we can cause other people to blaspheme the name of the Lord. One of the things the world likes to say is, all oh, those Christians are all a bunch of hypocrites. They don't even want to hear the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is blasphemed. Why? Because we didn't magnify his name. We didn't pray. We didn't sing. We didn't tell others about him. We're not living to please him. And his name then is diminished. People aren't glorifying the name of the Lord. Let me read you a couple of verses here. 2 Thessalonians 1.12 that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 4, 14. If ye, re be, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. We've got to glorify the name of the Lord. Otherwise, we'll cause for others to blaspheme God. His name, instead of being magnified, is diminished, is smaller. They don't, uh, they speak evil, as 1 Peter 4, 14 warns us. Magnifying the name of the Lord. Let's pray. 
and ask the Lord to help us to magnify his name. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you will help us to magnify your name. We thank you for your name, that you shared with us your name. Lord, you shared your name different places in the Bible. Even different times that you would mention how they, they didn't know a particular name about you. And then you would reveal that name. And then eventually you revealed the name of Jesus. You glorified, you gave that name. You glorified it, set it above all other names. Lord, please help us to magnify your name, to magnify the name of Jesus. Lord, please help us not to diminish your name. Please, Lord, speak to our hearts. Lord, if there's anyone here that needs to, or even listening by the live stream, that needs to put their faith in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray they'll do so right now. Bless them. Thank you. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's all stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. You know how the Lord has spoken.